He is risen. He is risen indeed. Thank you. <laughs> it's lovely to greet you all and uh, lovely to see so many people tuning in again this Easter Sunday uh, to praise God. Um, if you were with us last week, you'll have seen the palm leaf. The palm leaf has been joined by quite a few other things on our picture this evening and we're going to be looking at that as we go through this evening. Now I have to say again for the folk in Bucky, remember you can have your cup of tea at any time. You don't have to wait until the end of the meeting. You can have your cup of tea at any time as long as you remember to come back. Please do that. This morning um, Isabel and I went out and played um, Easter hymn tunes at the War Memorial at the end of the street here. Um, it was something we weren't sure whether we should do or not. Um, there were no police about so we weren't lifted, we weren't taken away. We were here for this evening. Um, but as we played we became aware that people were out listening and uh, when we got back home received a phone call to say just how much it meant to people. Um, it's another one of those daft ideas that I have and I, I don't realise the significance uh, of what some of these ideas really mean. God plants them in my head, I'm sure. That's my excuse. But certainly for some of the people listening this morning, it was the first act of live worship that they've been able to attend um, in a number of weeks now. And when I say attend, it's not sitting in front of a screen like this or watching the television. It was actually being there at a distance, but being there and singing along um, with the music that was being played, praising God and lifting their voices to him. And that, that truly was humbling um, this morning. Uh, one of our daft ideas, um, but God took it and he used it. And we're so grateful for that. So tomorrow we are having another one of our daft ideas. Sing and Play will be on and uh, we'll be doing that online again. I think we've already got about 10 uh, requests for that. So I've got my story ready to share. It's my turn to read the story tomorrow. And uh, we've got a number of, of uh, requests already for uh, the, the toddler group. We've opened that to include a number of other people that we know have young children at home and uh, as long as they don't share it too widely on the internet you know we're making fools of ourselves again and we're quite happy to do that but as long as they use it for the, the use it's intended. We did get a video back this week of one of the youngsters from the, uh, the, the toddler group who was watching and singing along and he doesn't sing along when he's at the toddler group so it was really encouraging to see that. Um, lovely to see some new people coming in. James it's lovely to see you being able to tune in tonight. Uh, on Tuesday we've got our food bank and again this week another 50 people um, were fed through that. And this is a small community we're talking about between Benekti and Bucky we're, we're talking about maybe 10,000 people, if that. Um, and we're feed, feeding 50 people each week at the moment as a result of that. Food is still being collected at the co-op and Lidl for us. And we're ever so grateful for that. And a number of people have contacted us um, to be able to, to help out with that as well. Next Sunday, uh, we will be online again, God willing and uh, sharing with you again next week. Uh, this week, of course, as the, the coronavirus has been spreading, um, there have been a number of people that we now are aware of who passed away for one reason or another. Some it's related to the virus and some um, there are other reasons as well. We ask you to continue to pray for uh, Major Carl Gray and his family. Carl is still in uh, intensive care in hospital in London. There have been positive si signs this week and there have been times when his um, condition has taken a turn for the worse. But at the moment, it seems to be pretty stable. So please continue to pray, pray for Carl. 
um, on Tuesday, uh, Wednesday morning rather, I got a phone, not a phone call, a, a message from my godson's brother in Tanzania to ask if I could find out information about uh, Major Isaac Siundu. Uh, Major Isaac Siundu was serving on international headquarters in London. He was born in Kenya. Um, so if there's anyone listening from Dundee, this was um, um, Bernard's son, Bernard Wangusi's son contacted me and uh, he was asking about Isaac who was born in Mihu Mihanga village, which is where Bernard came from. Sadly, Isaac um, appears to have succumbed to, to the coronavirus. So we ask that you remember his wife Anne and his children in these days. And we were also very, very saddened to hear of the passing of Graham Robb from Aberdeen Citadel. Graham was a good friend of ours, um, so full of life, so full of encouragement, so many ideas he had to share and such an encourager um, in the time that we were able to share at Aberdeen and since then as well. And uh, he was taken away very suddenly this week. And we remember Mags and his family. And we do pray that God will continue to bless them because they, they will be upheld by a number of people um, all over the world at this time. Graham is a, a, a very big miss to us. But we know where he's gone. We know that he's gone to be with his Saviour. And so in these very difficult times, we pray indeed that you will um, continue to remember those who are suffering, those who have lost loved ones. And we pray indeed that God will continue to bless us and work through us. We're going to start this evening with a, a good Easter song, number 217 in the songbook. Now, prepare for this. We apologise, the guitar is getting a rest this week because we prepared last night. Let's see if we can get all this technology to work. As many of you know, I'm not great at technology, but uh, we've done some, put something together and hopefully we'll be able to work this. Christ is alive, let Christians <coughs> sing. The cross stands empty to the sky. Let streets and homes with praises ring. Love drowned in death shall never die. It's tired. Here we go. The arrow's pointing. Let's try again. This is why I don't work well with technology. Oh, there's the wrong one. Okay. Oops, oh, I'm your visible. Not really. No. <laughs> I think you're going to have to for this one. Okay. That's why I don't work with technology. Oh, here we go. Oh. <laughs>
to work in. I'm going to share in some verses from Scripture, from Luke's Gospel, chapter 19, and verses 45 to 48. Then he entered the temple area and began driving out those who were selling. It is written, he said to them, My house will be a house of prayer, but you have made it a den of robbers. Every day he was teaching at the temple, but the chief priests, the teachers of the law and the leaders among the people were trying to kill him. Yet they could not find any way to do it because all the people hung on to his words. And reading from St Luke's Gospel, chapter 20, and commencing at verse 45. While all the people were listening, Jesus said to his disciples, Beware of the teachers of the law. They like to walk around in flowing robes and love to be greeted in the marketplaces and have the most important seats in the synagogues and the places of honour at banquets. They devour widows' houses and for a show make lengthy prayers. Such men will be punished most severely. Amen. Well, this evening, as I said, we're going to be looking at what's behind us and uh, having a, a visual representation of this last week of the life of Jesus. And so Jesus went in after Palm Sunday. He went into Jerusalem on the Monday and as he went to the temple, he was enraged to see people changing money, people making a profit out of a very difficult situation. People profiteering because folk had to go to the temple. They had to exchange into temple currency before they could buy anything or make their offerings at the temple. And he was enraged that the outer court of the temple, a place for all the nations to come and worship God, was being turned into a marketplace rather than the place of prayer that it was supposed to be. You know, I do love the little saying every now and then when people say, what would Jesus do? Always remember that that includes the possibility of turning over tables and running around with a whip. Jesus, quite rightly, was angry with what was happening. And so too should we be angry when the poor are oppressed, when people are taking advantage of situations. And my goodness, even in the situation that we find ourselves in now, there are people trying to take advantage of the situation. There are people who are profiteering on the back of others' misery or the difficulty in being able to find the goods that are really needed by everyone. So Jesus went and did that. Then on Tuesday, I've got my judgment here. The judgment on the Pharisees and the teachers of the law. These were people who were respected in the community, who wore fancy clothes, um, a bit like ourselves. People looked up to them. They were respected. They'd earned their position of respect within the community, but they were abusing that power that they had. They were abusing the knowledge that they had. They were taking from the poorest of society as well, imposing upon them burdens which were beyond what was reasonable. And rather than making life easier for others, rather than making it easier for them to find their way to God, they were putting barriers up in the way. And let's face it, barriers before all of this were big news across the world. Barriers being put up to keep people out, to protect our own Jesus looked at those teachers, the Pharisees. He looked at those people 
and he recognised in them many faults. So we've already gone in two days from the crowds waving the palm branches to Jesus starting to make enemies, more enemies, making enemies within the temple community, those whose livelihoods were being put at risk by his rage, those who were given a special place within their society were being mocked, were being derided, were being told that they were empty show. Jesus was not pleasing everyone. We're going to share together in prayer and these are um, prayers and reflections which have been written for this time that we find ourselves in. Have we lost the voice of lamentation? We love to speak of love and joy, faith and freedom, and so we should. These words are good. But lamentation, tears for our world, acknowledging all is not well, owning the pain, not just burying it in action, grief but obscured by business. The call to share in the suffering of Christ invites us to Gethsemane to weep with our Lord to spend time in the presence of the one who struggled, who wept, and yet who took the mess of the world upon his shoulders. Stay with me, he said, and yet his disciples slept, unwilling to enter his agony. Dare we stop and weep with him, realising lamentation does not obscure our hope, but rather is a pathway to it. Loving Father, we are very aware that this virus is causing so much pain and suffering and death. As we pray for the sick and dying and those bereaved, our hearts are heavy and sad as we remember those who have been overtaken by this virus. We remember before you all who are in need of healing, of strength to fight this virus, of medical treatment, of ventilators, and we remember those who are ministering to them in very difficult circumstances and the families who today mourn their loved ones taken from them because of this pan pandemic. Jesus, we know you are no stranger to suffering and pain for you were whipped and beaten and mocked and flogged by those who did not understand who you were. You bore that suffering alone under the eyes of those who loved you and couldn't do anything to stop what was happening to you. Jesus, we know your death was horrific as the Romans nailed you to that cross and watched you die in agony. O oh Lord, be with all who need you right now in their pain. Hold their hand, reveal your presence, assure them of your love so that they may know peace. Show them your glory and your grace and take them in your loving arms so they may feel carried through the darkness into your marvellous light. Thank you, Lord, that you endured the suffering of the cross so that we might live forever with you. We think of the words of the song, so I'll cherish the old rugged cross till my trophies at last I lay down. I will cling to the old rugged cross and exchange it some day for a crown. And Father, we just pray all these things in Jesus' precious name. Amen. to the struggle. The struggle is real. We're going to have another song. Do you want to introduce it while I play with it? It's song number 228 in our songbook. Low in the grave he lay, Jesus my saviour. They're keen. They're far too keen this pair. <laughs> Turn them round and we'll press. They're not going to play now, are they? Don't you just love it? Oh, 
of the dark domain, and he lives forever with the saints to reign. He arose, he arose, alleluia, Christ the Lord. Now I have to say the last couple of weeks I've been meaning to introduce you to someone who was gifted to us the other week. This came from Mason. Mason's at home so thank you very much Mason for this little Easter trick. Ola, I hope you're watching. There's another idea for you to try it at home. I'm going to share in another scripture reading now. And this one's taken from St. Luke's Gospel, chapter 22. St. Luke's Gospel, chapter 22. In my head, I can actually hear myself adding on this evening as I'm saying we're going to read from the scripture. I've got so many little phrases that have become stuck in my mind over the years. And that's a, we're going to read from the scripture this evening. It's from St. Luke's Gospel, chapter 2 and coming 22 verses 3 to 6. Then Satan entered Judas, called Iscariot, one of the twelve. And Judas went to the chief priests and the officers of the temple guard and discussed with them how he might betray Jesus. They were delighted and agreed to give him money. He consented and watched for an opportunity to hand Jesus over to them when no crowd was present. And then continuing to read in Luke 22 from verse 14 through to verse 20. When the hour came, Jesus and his apostles reclined at the table, and he said to them, I have eagerly desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. For I tell you, I will not eat it again until it finds fulfilment in the kingdom of God. After taking the cup, he gave thanks and said, Take this and divide it among you. For I tell you, I will not drink again of the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God comes. And he took bread, gave thanks and broke it and gave it to them, saying, This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after the supper, he took the cup, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, which is poured out for you. Amen. Amen. So we've got behind us again the, um, the picture showing us what's happening. Up here, we've got the, the money that Judas took in exchange for our Lord. It was the way to his heart. He was disappointed, perhaps, with Jesus. He was looking for a different kind of what Jesus had indicated to them on the Sunday that he was coming into Jerusalem as a king who came in peace. He came in humility. He wasn't there to start a fight. Not a physical fight, anyway. Judas was given the money, which of course he later tried to give back. But then the disciples met on the Thursday to share the Passover meal. And here we have something to represent the Passover meal, the cup and the bread that was given there. So as about some thoughts. When I think about um, the whole time of Jesus' crucifixion and I think about the Passover, um, it was the right time for Jesus to be crucified at the Passover when the lamb is killed for the Passover meal. And then after they had shared that supper together, the lamb of God sacrificed for us. And uh, when I think of the Last Supper, and I think about the sacrifice of a lamb to feed, um, to, 
that was the it represented the atonement of the sins for um, the, the the Jewish nation. I think about the sacrifice of Jesus for us. Um, how he, Jesus was willing to die for us, to give his life, to be broken for us, for our sins. And because of Jesus' death, because of his resurrection, which we'll think about a little later, we can know something of eternal life. And that can give us so much assurance. Mm. Can you imagine what it would have been like to have been one of the disciples meeting there that night as they, they shared, not along one side of the table, but as they shared together that meal, wanting to be as close to Jesus as possible, to hear his words, and then to hear the words that he was saying, that his body was going to be given, his blood was going to be spilt for them. How much of that do you really think they understood? I don't think they understood at all. I, I don't think... You know, Jesus told them what was going to happen, but I don't know that they fully understood um, what was happening. And remember that Jesus had told Peter that he was going to deny him. And, you know, Peter said, no, Lord, I'm never going to deny you. And, you know, yet when he found himself warming his hands in the temple court, you know, people asked him, you're with this man, you knew this man. And he said, no, I did not. And then when the cop remembered Jesus' words um, and, and I think for the disciples they must have just felt how much they must have let Jesus down and yet Jesus knew they were going to do it mm. you know he knew what was going to happen I mean even down to Judas betraying him he did say that one of you here are going to betray me um, but it's this whole thing you know how did how must they have felt and yet you know they didn't I don't think they understood I don't think they understood um what yeah. Jesus was saying. Yeah. You know, uh, they had followed Jesus for those three years. They had seen all the miraculous signs that he could do. You know, they heard his teaching and, and he told them all the time that the Son of Man will suffer. And yet, you know, you know sometimes you're told something you think, oh, it'll go away. And maybe that's how they felt. Maybe they thought, oh, it'll go away. It won't happen. It won't really happen. Yeah. And I don't think it was till after it all that they realised wait a minute I remember you know maybe they said wait a minute we remember he said that that was what he said yeah I mean there, there were a lot of times when Jesus was speaking figuratively so I suppose hearing things like the son of man must suffer and die give his body and be raised things like that hearing those kind of things they might have been trying to figure out what he really meant rather than than thinking um that's quite literal this time. They, they may well have just been thinking, what is going on there? Um, what is he talking about? Is he talking about dying to something? Because we talk about dying to sin. Um, and, you know, we're not actually dying when we die to sin. So the disciples could have been trying to figure out what was behind those words. And then... For some of them, there may well have been a dawning on them that this was it. Um, in the next few hours, this was it. Things were going to turn out, turn out really quite badly mm. as far as they were concerned. And then when Jesus was crucified, they all scattered. They all ran away. They just, you know, they didn't... Yeah. Uh, does that give you any sort of... Um, I don't know, any any feeling of, well, it happened to them, so it's not so bad when I mess up. Mm. It doesn't help me. <laughs> no. say, you know, when, when I make a mistake or a, a big mistake, um, it hurts. And the fact that the disciples who were with Jesus saw the miracles in person, heard his words, and the explanations in person, the fact that they got it wrong really doesn't help me at that time. Maybe it does later, because Jesus still loved them. Yeah. And even Peter, as we find out maybe next week or the week after, Peter's forgiven and reinstated. But I find it really difficult. So there they were sharing 
that meal, which was a turning point. Things were never going to be the same again after that meeting. I'm going to share um, words from Luke chapter 23, and I'm reading from verse 32. Two other men, both criminals, were also led out with him to be executed. When they came to the place called the Skull, there they crucified him along with the criminals, one on his right, the other on his left. Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. And they divided up his clothes by casting lots. The people stood watching and the rulers even sneered at him. They said, he saved others. Let him save himself if he is the Christ of God, the chosen one. The soldiers also came up and mocked him. They offered him wine vinegar and said, If you are the king of the Jews, save yourself. There was written a notice above him which read, This is the king of the Jews. One of the criminals who hung there hurled insults at him. Aren't you the Christ? Save yourself and us. But the other criminal rebuked him. Don't you fear God, he said, since you are under the same sentence. We are punished justly, for we are getting what our deeds deserve. But this man has done nothing wrong. Then he said, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Jesus answered him, I tell you the truth. Today you will be with me in paradise. It was now about the sixth hour. And darkness came over the whole land until the ninth hour, for the sun stopped shining, and the curtain of the temple was torn in two. Jesus called out with a loud voice, Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. When he said this, he breathed his last. The centurion, seeing what had happened, praised God and said, Surely this was a righteous man. When all the people who had gathered to witness this sight saw what took place, they beat their breasts and went away. But all those who knew him, including the women who had followed him from Galilee, stood at a distance watching these things. And that really is the crux of the Easter story, that Christ died on the cross for us. That as people were on the cross, they had the opportunity to recognise who Jesus was or who wasn't. Some recognised him and some mocked him. And that's still the same today. There are people who recognise who Jesus is, that his claims are true, that his claims are just. They stand up to scrutiny and others find it easier to deride those claims and for each of us we have to make that choice we have to to make that choice for ourselves no one else can make that decision for us whether we accept what happened on that day was it just someone who had fallen foul of the law being killed or was it the son of god giving his life so that you and I could spend eternity with God in heaven. I believe that Jesus gave you and I believe that he gave his life so that my sins could be washed away and yours too. We are going to sing again a favourite of many, I think, and it's 276 in the songbook. Thine is the glory, risen, conquering sun. Endless is the victory, thou or death hast won. Angels in bright raiment rolled the stone away, kept the folded grave clothes where thy body lay. Thine is the glory, risen, conquering sun. Endless is the victory, thou or death hast won. I'm sorry we don't have any trombones tonight to put in the trombone part, but maybe where you're sitting at home, you'll be able to do that. I'm not going to try it, but maybe you would like to try that at home if we get the video up. <laughs> <laughs> I'm still playing with this. Oh dear. It's gone very, very slow indeed.
It seemed like a good idea at the time. That's good. <laughs> I don't think we're not going to have any accompaniment to I that. I don't think we are. I think it's time for me to get the guitar out then. Here we go. They've showed up. They've showed up. Okay. <laughs> I've disappeared again. I'm not sure where they've gone. I would look it up for the guitar. Yes, I think so. Okay. And they'll probably join us halfway There's through. There's a lot of funny chords in this one, so you'll okay. just have to excuse me. Okay. And I haven't practiced, so I'll put my I'll put all my excuses in now. married well, didn't I? She's so versatile. I'm going to share some verses now from St Matthew's Gospel, chapter 27, and verse 62. The next day, the one after preparation day, the chief priests and the Pharisees went to Pilate. Sir, they said, we remember that while he was still alive, that deceiver said, after three days, I will rise again. So give the order for the tomb to be made secure until the third day. Otherwise, his disciples may come and steal the body and tell the people that he has been raised from the dead. This last deception will be worse than the first. Take a guard, Pilate answered. Go make the tomb as secure as you know how. So they went and made the tomb secure by putting a seal on the stone and posting the guard. Amen. And from St Luke's Gospel, chapter 24, the first eight verses. 
On the first day of the week, very early in the morning, the women took the spices they had prepared and went to the tomb. They found the stone rolled away from the tomb, but when they entered, they did not find the body of the Lord Jesus. While they were wandering about this, suddenly two men in clothes that gleamed like lightning stood beside them. In their fright, the women bowed down with their faces to the ground. But the men said to them, Why do you look for the living among the dead? He is not here. He has risen. Remember how he told you while he was still with you in Galilee, the Son of Man must be delivered into the hands of sinful men, be crucified, and on the third day be raised again. Then they remembered his words. What a moment that must have been. What a moment it must have been. We've gone from the day before where the guard was placed in front of the tomb, where they were waiting, waiting. They had nothing to do. I mean, it was a stupid job to be given, guarding a dead man. Just utterly ridiculous. Guard him to make sure that, what, people steal his body? Why did they steal his body? A ridiculous thing. And yet, the next day, from the darkness at the centre, comes this light the light of <coughs> life as jesus is raised from the dead from the darkness which my goodness our world is very much in our world is facing a darkness at this time the world there are many people whose focus is completely on that darkness who can't see because the fear has gripped them they don't know what tomorrow is going to bring. But we know that etern the eternal tomorrow is to be lived in the light of the risen Saviour. That's what eternity is what we are looking towards. The cross of Jesus, where his life was given, speaks of the sacrifice having been given for us. And that empty tomb speaks of the hope for each one of us, for you and for I. In the midst of these very, very dark days when we need hope, our Saviour provides that hope for us. As those women went in their darkness of despair, trying to do one last thing for their Lord, they could not understand what they were being told. They couldn't understand what they were being faced with when they got to the tomb. But they were given the glorious news of Jesus raised from the dead. And so, in these dark times, hold on to the fact that the Saviour has been raised for you and for I. And we don't need to live in dark times. But each one of us, each one of us can know eternal security through Jesus Christ, our Lord and Saviour. I pray that God will bless you and God will be with you in these coming days. May God light up this world and may there be many souls who seek and find him at this time. We're going to bring this time to a conclusion with song number 218, Christ the Lord is risen today. See if we can get our friends to um, work with us now. Here we go, it's looking hopeful. He's risen today, Oh, well. 
not sure if you saw the look of relief on my face at the end of five verses of that, but I was ever so pleased. Thank you for joining with us again this evening. Um, we pray indeed that this is a glorious Easter day for you, very different from any other Easter day that we have shared in the past, but still full of hope for Jesus Christ is risen. Let us pray. Gracious Heavenly Father, as we gather together, but separated by many miles, we thank you that our Saviour was raised to life so that we may have the hope of eternity with you. Lord, in these dark, dark times in this world, where there is so much grief and sorrow, so much fear and despair, we'll be able to turn to the Saviour and know that in him will be well. And so, Lord, as we come to the end of this time, we pray your blessing upon each person. May your glory shine across this world and may your name be praised. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.